Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. This is the Wix Online meeting number 137. Almost Halloween for those of you that do that kind of thing. Here we go. Agenda. We actually got a few things to talk about today. Um, we'll do triage like we always do. Uh, Wix for status will go quickly. Um, I'll explain why in a minute. And then Jacob brought up the issue that he'd like to talk about, the referencing related bundle variables, things like that, which is actually item number 3704 from Ancient History. Uh, so we'll talk about that because he has to put it on the agenda, which is always good. And then we'll do questions and comments for anything else left over. But since this meeting right here has Bob and Jacob on it, I expect we're probably not going to have a whole lot of additional questions, but um, they could surprise me. Well, you're here too. You can. Yeah, but I don't bring additional questions like that. I just put it in the agenda. Um, that's right. Triage, let's roll. Da -da -da -da. After a little bit of cleanup, we only have one, two, three, four, four issues. Um, bundles not registered in ARP during install if bundles already cached. Interesting. So if somehow you get the bundle cached and then you do an install, it doesn't register in ARP. I suppose that's possible. Backup, uninstall the bundle, restore the back. Oh my goodness. Wow. This is why nobody's seen this before, because who does this? But okay. Yeah, it's a little weird. Yeah, this probably falls similar in the problem where Burn has a problem that if a file's local, it won't ask for any other files outside of the world. Um, this isn't the same as that, but it falls kind of in that bucket of edge cases that Burn could handle a little smarter kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it'd be great if someone wanted to fix this. I, I It's going to take a lot of testing. I, this alone is a little troublesome. Maybe we could shine so sign Sean up. Wow. Sign Sean up since he's not here to take a look at this. Yeah, that, that's pretty mean. <laughs> but it wouldn't be completely out of character. For some of us, yes. <laughs> <laughs> For some of us. Uh, nice try to dodge there, Bob. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let's put it in 4 just to see if it kind of makes sense and see if what he's saying actually makes sense in the larger context of the code. He or she. Yeah, works for me. Man, I have to play with it. Yeah, I, Jacob, you're right. They are messing with the cache directly, but there could be other things that causes this. So it'd be good that, I mean, the idea being that you need to be able to get back into a good state. And if you're stuck here, the only thing you can do is tell a user to go delete some file with a GUID in it in the package cache, and that's probably not what we want people doing to fix it. You'd rather be able to say, oh, yeah, yeah, you have crap in your cache. We cleaned it out because it was obviously the wrong stuff because, you know, when we verify it, we should delete the things out of the cache and then roll forward from there. Overwrite equals no, not working on the certificate element. Okay. Yeah, this is, isn't actually supported. Oh, not supported? Yeah. Overwrite equals no, doesn't work? does not a thing. Hmm. There's code in there. Um, I forget exactly the context. Um, uh, but the only reference uh, to that bit flag is commented out. Oh. There's actually a huge chunk of commented out code. Um, so there's probably other attributes or assumed functionality that doesn't work. Cool. So this needs to be implemented. Yeah. That's kind of weird that it says that it's implemented. Well, it doesn't. Um, it's one of the undocumented. Uh, the attribute has no documentation in the schema. That doesn't mean anything, unfortunately. But it yeah. does not. <laughs> um, we could add a warning in three fourteen to say, hey, don't do this. Yeah, okay, right. Or implement the code. Yeah, so, yeah, that's the thing to do. Jacob, you want to do that? <laughs> Go add a warning if overwrite is set. And we could do the same thing in 
in 4.0. Uh, well, uh, that'll just be in the compiler extension. Yeah, I mean, you're just talking managed code in the compiler extension. It won't be that hard to find and change. Um, yeah, and then I guess we can decide if we keep this issue open after that. So why don't we give it to Jacob, see where it goes on that, and then we can discuss whether we keep this issue open, the fact that overwrite doesn't work. That works for me. All right. Unable to build when ref referencing a multi-targeting project. I guess that doesn't surprise me. Um, give this to me for now. I have a couple that I must build things that I want to mess with um, in 4.0, and I will take a look at this. Okay. Because I need to understand what's going on here anyway. Um, build utilities 2.0 still referenced. In 3.14. Yeah, we haven't changed. All right, fine. You can give this to me and put it in 3.14 for now and whatever. Or okay. use this issue as the thing that resolves it. Yes, it will be removed. Um, it's actually already out in 4, but we don't have a new build on the new 4 stuff. So, Right. Uh, let's go talk about that because that's what's next. So, yay, all the bugs triaged. Where do we end up with? I need to look at that. That's a known issue. Someone needs to look. Sean may look at that. And Jacob said he might take a look at that. All right, cool. That's pretty good. All right, where's four status? If you took a screenshot of last week's um, presentation for this slide um, and you look at this one, you notice that they are identical, exactly the same, not different in any way, shape, or form. Um, and that's because while great progress is being made, um, uh, it, the Things are, I don't, I don't want to say they're harder than I thought they would be, but they're hard. Um, and it's not hard. Um, there's a lot of code that has to get changed to, or it gets updated to fix all these things. And so I am making good progress, but the, the I have not found the bottom yet. And so it's just taking a little bit longer. Each couple of weeks, I'm like, yeah, two weeks should be enough. Um, and I get a little bit farther. But I am getting very, very close. I really thought I'd have it by today, and I don't. So again, I'm going to say the same thing I said in the past. In two weeks, we'll talk about all the things that have changed when we can see some more of them um, and where the people could jump in and play. Besides, Jacob was one of those people that said he might be interested in jumping into Wix 4 and working on some of this stuff, and he brought up something that's more interesting to him. We're going to talk about that now, which is the reference-related bundle variables, issue number 3704. And rather than write a whole bunch of things, I thought I'd just bring up issue 3704. And this is an old request, um, which was a very reasonable thing. Oh, good grief, it came from SourceForge. Um, I guess it wasn't that long that we were on SourceForge. Five years? Okay. Anyway, um, the desire to be able to access the persisted variables from a related bundle, which totally makes sense. Um, and we were worried about creating a tight binding between the file format, so that has to be designed very carefully. Um, yeah. And so we've ended up here where people are complaining, when is this going to happen? And my answer is, uh, it's not assigned to anybody, so it means we're waiting for someone to write this and actually implement it, which I think Jacob has raised the interest in doing so. Um, so in the mailing list, on top of uh, the discussion that he's interested in this, Jacob brought up the idea that instead of trying to read the um, file format that persists the, the binder variables, perhaps we could do something simpler like put them in the registry, which is actually what we tell people to do today when they want to solve this. The easiest solution is to use an MSI to write a reg key and use your bundle BA to read those well-known registry locations. And I think Jacob basically proposed doing the same thing for uh, bundle variables, which makes pretty good sense to me um, in the end. But it's not clean. So, you know, I was thinking about this, but if we use the uninstall key um, to store these variables, that's actually a pretty decent way of doing it because the uninstall key gets cleaned up very well should the bundle be um, removed prematurely and that key doesn't get it. The add remove programs will clean that key up. Um, and rather than trying to worry about creating a file format the same, 
restoring the value of persisted reg keys or you know to reg keys that could be shared across related bundles um, in the registry is actually not a bad way to go. What do you think, Bob? Um, yeah, the file format's a problem. Um, I definitely don't want to get into the business of having to maintain. Um, you know, should we change the version or the file uh, the file format to add a new version, which granted we have not done. Yeah, you know, in the n years that Burn has been around, um, we. You know, we'd have to basically carry around that file format logic indefinitely. Um, I don't want to get into that business. This yeah, is, this is this is where engines start to, you know, fall over from back compat. Yeah. Um, that said, the problem, and again, it's not a solved problem even in the RSM file, but. You know, for example, what do we do about about hidden variables? Um, well, I mean, if we write them in the registry, we should use DAPI to encrypt them or whatever. Uh, yeah. And if you don't, you know, we could not allow them to write you know, hidden variables as well. Like, no, we will not persist your you know, password or whatever. Probably but we already have secure. Smart. We already have a secure concept, so being able to use DAPI is not that hard to write them to the end result. Yeah, you know, it's what the rest of Windows. It's what's for Windows. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. So Jake has brought up when they want to only persist. He doesn't want to persist everything, just the things you opt into, and I think that's correct. We should only persist things, not persist. We should only make available cross versions those things that the author um, opts into. Now, whether that's, you know, if you just mark it persist, will that do it? I um, don't know. Um, I guess my other question is, storing them in the registry somewhat solves the problem, but then do we just say, go read from this key, or do we have, you know, an API or some other uh, way of actually letting a new bundle do this? And Jacob points out we have, you know, there's an existing uh, bundle util uh, set of functions in dutil. Um, yeah, that, that's that seems reasonable. I mean, whether we expose another API through the engine. I don't know. Yeah, you, we, yeah. If you already have bundle, get bundle info. Then being able to return those variables is going to be enough. Yeah, I think Jacob's right. We have enough in there already. They'll just get bigger. You get more data. Yay! Things that were marked persisted and shared, or you know, a cross version persisted, or whatever the name of this attribute would be, you know, on this. So. Right. I'm just you know right now, right now you know, or from a BA or through the you know related bundle, we know um, what the related bundle is, or we get its ID, so that's we right. can go get you know call bundle get bundle info. Right. But right now, that's designed for you know um, basically a set of well known. Well, let's pretend that it's a set of well known uh, bits of info. So we'd have a new. <laughs> We need a new API. That's all I'm saying. I don't. I I think you could do bundle get bundle info and just say. Please. Right now, you ask for a well-known property, or oh, a well-known property. Info. Oh, I see. Sorry, I, I, it doesn't come back with struct, right? Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, sorry, I'm not saying this is you know hard or even. Yep, this is all stuff anything. that should go into a whip. I agree. There, uh, it, yeah. There's a cool feature here, like, and I mean, my point stands. Yes, this would be cool. I think the idea of using the registry to avoid the type binding of the variable, uh, the the data file, is a good idea. Um, and I think now we need to kind of work through all of the 
uh, related issues. And I think Jacob's farther along on that thinking than you or I are. Um, and based on his comments over here in the thread, I think he's got the right idea. I'm wondering if we could update persist, if we can make persist a tri-state. Should we make persist a tri-state? You know, a yes, no, or shared, or, you know, whatever, or not. Or whether it's better to do another... Um, Better to do another um, attribute, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's. I agree with Jacob's question. Why would you? It's one of those. I I want to say that if we say persist, it should you know, it should persist them. The implementation, um, I think, should be you know hidden as much as we can. So that's the other thing. It's like, I want us to provide an API mostly so that we are not locked into using a particular register key, which I think also addresses uh, Jacob's other idea of doing it, um, you know, not necessarily in the uninstall key. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't, um, I don't, the reason I like the uninstall key is because should things go awry, it gets cleaned up correctly. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, no, it's, I probably lean in that direction as well. Um, I'm wondering, though, well, so I, sorry, it, if we provide an API, the problem is we need to provide both native and managed APIs. Or we document, you know, where it lives. Uh, thank you, Jacob. Yes, that makes sense. Maybe the provider key, not the bundle ID. That doesn't make sense to me. It will only we shouldn't be writing multiple things in the uninstall key that aren't the bundle ID. But we do. We write other keys in the uninstall key. If you specify a no, the default the default provider key for a bundle is the bundle ID, but oh, you can sorry, okay. override it. Sorry, my bad. If the provider key is right. Yes, technically the key in the in the ARP key is yeah, the right. provider key, not right. the bundle ID. Right, right, right. Right. That. There's still only one per bundle. That's what I was trying to get to. It wasn't there was two. Yes. There's only one. As right. long as we ignore dependency info, yes. Pretty sure. I'm pretty sure there should be one per bundle. No more than one per bundle. There shouldn't be two bundles in the uninstall key. That would be very odd. We'd start opening ourselves to having two entries inside ARP for one bundle, which doesn't make sense. All right, cool. So I think we have enough here to have a whip put together and then discuss it and then go from there. Sound good, Jacob? And get some details down on this. Um, things that you've been thinking. But I think the registry key and the uninstall key is actually pretty good way to go to avoid our data file problem. Yes, I think that's the way to go, the uninstall key. I think that is the way to go. Now, what the design in there looks like, I eh, need to sort out. But yeah, that's... Well, the nice yeah. thing is that you can add keys to... Subkeys, that. right. You can add subkeys and... Yes. A whole new workspace. Yes. All right. Other things things people want to talk about, stuff going on. Jacob's typing. There's all these new orange dots in Skype that I don't know. We exposed the beta methods on the engine if we want to avoid the managed code accessing it. Yeah, so I think that's a good thing to call out in the whip and think about which way do we want to expose this. Is exposed on the engine or is exposed True. <laughs> the, you know, as a standalone function or what. Um, I have to put them down and see what you think of those two options, but those are both options. All right, anything else? Pretty good, small group. Got our little 20, 30-minute meeting in. 20 minutes, running a little five minutes late and finishing five minutes early. 
think that's good. So I think Jacob will have much more discussion on the mailing list after he has a sketch of a whip. Um, yes, you can go ahead and take that issue um, since you are working on it. And we can drop it in four and move everything forward. Excellent. So on that note, uh, everyone have a wonderful week, and we'll see you, or two weeks, and we'll see you in November. Bye. Bye.